I hit the go button. Oh, look at that. It says it. It says I'm going. I've got I've got OBS open on my left hand screen, and f on the far right, oh, it's gonna make a noise on my on my tablet. There we are. We're good. Um, and on my right, I've got uh, I've got the YouTube Studio app, not app, page, and I've got the chat open as well. Um, I see that there's there's two people that are listed as viewers. Can I get a can I get like a message if you can hear things? I'm just gonna type this out as well. I've not used YouTube to stream before. In the past, like, a couple of years ago, I used Twitch a little bit, which was just not good. It, well, it was okay. I just don't like doing this kind of thing in general. Um... But I've uh yeah, never used YouTube for this. It was a it was an easy process. I went to the I opened the YouTube website, I went to the go button, the thing that where you upload and stuff, and I clicked the stream button and I selected um use my own software and then it just gave me stuff and then I put in all the info, you know, I put down a title. Yes, you can hear good. Okay. Um yeah, I, I put in a title, I put in a category, I've got a description on, on the on the feed, which says some words, um, and I'll I'll read that out for for the sake of the um uh the recording later. Um and I've got closed captions enabled, so I had to set it to a, a, a different latency setting, which was strange. Um and uh, it's pro automatic captions, in my experience, are not very good with YouTube, especially when there's a lot of background noise. But hopefully, it won't be too bad. Um. Yes. So I'm going to do some backstory for the benefit of me in the future and the recording. So um, I'm going to play through Metal Gear Solid, or at least a good portion of Metal Gear Solid. So this is a video game for um, the PlayStation 1, which is a console from maybe 1997. I forget. I'm not... Look, I'm not... I'm not that knowledgeable. I'm just clicking on the word PlayStation. Uh, just, uh, just to clarify, it's uh, 1994 in Japan? Good lord. Okay. Um, yeah. And Metal Gear Solid... This is from 1998, um, so it's just you know off the top of my head, no no Wikipedia article or anything. It's uh, it's a, it, I think I'd say it's an action adventure style video game, developed and published by Konami for the PlayStation in uh, 1998, and um, just you know as I recall, uh, it was directed, produced, and written by Hideo Kojima and follows the MSX2 video games Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2: Solid Snake, which Kojima also worked on. Uh, <laughs> And um, yeah, it's I've I've played through it before. It's what I have trouble finishing games. It's one of the games that I've I've finished. Um, I've played uh, Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid Two, Three, and Four, um, and I've made a good bit of process pro progress in Metal Gear Solid Five, but I don't know if I'm going to finish it. Probably not, because um, they they tend to be, um, in my experience, they've been sort of shorter games than most, because I see them more as sort of action film experiences. So the Metal Gear Solid, when I first played through it, took me nine and a half or ten-ish hours. Um, and I played that on the, the PlayStation Portable, which is their portable system from 2004 or something, which is terrifying. Um, and uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 took me like 10 to 11 hours, and the Metal Gear Solid 3 was a little bit longer, 12 to 13. 
And Melia Solid 4 took me the longest. Um, but that was only like 13 and a half hours, which wasn't bad. Um, yeah, so I, I figured I'd go for this because it's it's there's a lot of uh, wordy exposition. There's a little bit of action film stuff. Um, you know, cool stunts and things. There's not as many as the remake, which I'm not going to get into. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, it should be should be reasonable as a starting point, I think. So, um, to reiterate what I've got in the description there, I'm emulating this um, using a program called DuckStation. Um, and uh, it's got a handy little feature where there's going to be a loud noise for a quick second here while I demonstrate. Um I can, um, at the moment on, on, on screen and the visuals, I've just got an, an away screen that says away, we'll be back soon. Um, but I'm just going to unpause and repause real quickly. So th this is what emulation allows me to do. I can resume the game like so, and then I can pause it on command, and I've just got that bound to the space key, which is the default. Um, so having no experience, um, and obviously having no script um, for this, because I'm far too lazy to do that, uh, I'm just going to be doing it, um, doing audio description and commentary live. And when, especially when I'm playing um, video games and watching films, I like to take a lot of time to talk about things. So, um, yeah, whenever I need to describe anything that happens, I might, I might find wait for a small gap between lines or something, and then pause, explain what's going on if there's anything that needs to be gone over. So. I'm probably going to pause most of the time rather than trying to speak over things or um, or gauge the amount of time because I'm not confident in my ability at all. Um, but yes, I, I've also got a, a quick um, request in the description there. If you've got any um, ideas, tips, um, uh, requests of your own um, for ways that I can make it easier for you to understand or um uh you know if, if you're if you're watching visually to make it easy for you to see i've got my own feed up here with all my you know i've got it running at a high resolution and everything and that's fine for me but i can i can change how the stream looks um you know if you want me to put a filter on it anything like that that's fine um all the audio i, I will be doing that as i go because i'm not um 100 so We'll, we'll see how that sounds. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't actually listen to a lot of audio-described content, mostly just uh, in passing. I have in the past, but nowadays I don't. So I'm just going to kind of go for it. And a lot of... When people play video games, especially streaming them, obviously... A lot of the time, they 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 describe things, but I think um, especially with Metal Gear Solid, there's a bit there's a bit more to do here. So you know, there's boss fights and things. Um, so I'd like to go over those. You know, the 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 um, uh, the locations that they're in, because a lot of the the locations in this game are really really cool, um, and um some of the characters they have they have really distinctive voices because it's it's kind of an action film type thing um it's kind of cliche and um i don't know if kitschy is the right word but like all of the the characters have kind of accentuated um uh you know accents and mannerisms and stuff so snake always sounds like this and um you know the main antagonist is a really funny british guy um a, a lot of my um uh, humor comes from other people, so I may do some silly jokes that are absolutely not mine, just because they're ingrained in my in my brain. Um, I can't remember where I was going to go from there. I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna get into it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back to the scene with the video on it. Nothing about the audio should have changed, if I'm understanding correctly. Um, and I'm probably going to go for. Don't know if you can hear that siren outside. It's quite loud. Um, probably going to go for about an hour, maybe. I'm gonna give it give it a try. So we're probably just gonna get through the in, the intro section. I'm not sure. Depends how long it takes. So I've got it paused at the moment. I'm going to reset the game um, in the emulator. Um, just 
you know, re restart the, the system. So we'll um, first get um, a bit of a black screen so there won't be any, any sound. And then there will be a kind of sound, and that's the boot up for the, um, uh, the BIOS of the system. So um, once that's played, the next one will be um, uh, the Konami intro, which is the producers of the game. Um, and then we'll get to probably the intro cutscene or the title screen. I forget. Um, so if we go to the intro cutscene, I'll probably skip it because you also get that when you start the game. So let me reset and uh, and I'll shut up for a bit so you can get the the full impact. The PlayStation 1 really has one of those classic intros. Produced by Konami, Konami Computer Entertainment Japan presents... A Hideo Kojima game. Alaska, the Bering Sea. A submarine through deep blue water. The command center of the submarine, there are um, blue-green military screens, radars, um, a raised area in the center um, has uh, the, the head crew member, the captain on it. The nuclear weapons disposal facility on Shadow Moses Island in Alaska's Fox Archipelago was attacked and captured by next generation special forces being led by members of Foxhound. They're demanding that the government turn over the remains of Big Boss and they say that if their demands are not met within 24 hours, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. Inside of a torpedo uh, a a a masked individual is uh, is lying prone. You'll have two mission objectives. Solid Snake, David Hater. First, you're to rescue DARPA chief Donald Anderson and the president of Armstech, Kenneth Baker. Both are being held as hostages. Secondly. You're to investigate whether or not the terrorists have the ability to make a nuclear strike. And stop them if they do. The torpedo closes. What's the insertion method? We'll approach the disposal facility by sub. And then? We'll launch a one-man SDV. After the SDV gets as close as it can, dispose of it. From there on, you'll have to swim. The torpedo fires from the f side of the submarine. Straight ahead into the deep blue. High-tech Special Forces Unit Foxhound. Your former unit, and one that I was a commander of. The torpedo is uh, speeding into an underground, underwater cave. So they're still around. There are six members of Foxhound involved in this terrorist activity. Psycho Mattis, with his powerful psychic abilities. Sniper Wolf, a beautiful and deadly sharpshooter. Decoy Octopus, master of disguise. Vulcan Raven, giant and shaman. Torpedo breaks open. And Revolver Ocelot, specialist in interrogation and a formidable gunfighter. And finally, in charge of them, Foxhound Squad Leader, 
Liquid Snake. Liquid Snake? The man with the same code name as you. The nuclear weapons disposal facility covers the whole island. I'll instruct you by codec after you reach your target. Anyone going with me? As usual, this is a one-man infiltration mission. Solid Snake swims to the surface in the underwater cave. Weapons and equipment, OSP. On-site procurement. Yes, this is a top-secret black op. Don't expect any official support. Fade to white. And the title screen. Tactical espionage action. Metal Gear Solid. Uh, in the background, there's um, uh, like like blueprints and um, technical drawings, sort of scrolling past, fading over each other, and a uh, a profile picture of Solid Snake um, wearing a, a pair of um, night vision goggles. Copyright 1987-1998. Konami. All rights reserved. Right. So. Let me check the settings. The option screen, it's, uh, it's styled after, I think, 1980s um, milita uh, US military interfaces on computers. So it's sort of a, a bright green um, with some basic graphics. Let's see, we want captions on, we want the sound stereo. Don't know if it's coming through the stream stereo. Um, I'm not really sure how that works. I want vibration on, and I can test the vibration. Yep. Um, screen brightness and key config is all fine, and I can cope. All right, let's go to new game, and I can select some different difficulty levels. I'm not very good at video games. Um, I'm going to go with the easy difficulty. Um, the differences, as far as I know, are pretty... Um, uh, normal to deal with, so it's um, uh, you know enemies can't see as far, they don't do as much damage, um, but I don't think it reduces the number of enemies. Um, it doesn't really matter that much. In stereo, good, good. All right, so we're in the underwater cave again. It's lit. Uh, uh, Solid Snake is is um, flippering along near the surface of the water. Um, it's lit from both sides by a few um, sort of bright green lamps. It's hard to tell. They're basically just single squares on the wall. David Hater. Uh, from the point of view of Solid Snake, we see uh, a loading bay with um, gantries across the ceiling with, with hooks on, on uh, cranes. There's chains hanging from the ceiling. Um, shipping containers uh, are, are filling the, the middle of the chamber. Um, there's some steps um, up out of the water to the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, a sheer drop-off into the water. And a couple of patrols. Christopher Fritz and May Zadler. Uh, camera there focused on Solid Snake uh, popping his head out of the water and um, one of the patrols. Um, also starring Paul Otis, Karen Learning and Kim Noyan. George Bird, Patrick Lane, and Doug Stone. Stay alert. If you'll be through here, I know it. That's a, uh, a character wearing a, a long coat uh, on uh, a freight elevator at the rear of the, the loading dock, um, speaking to one of the patrols. Chuck Farley and Julie Monroe. I'm going to swap down a couple of bombers and flies. Red alarms as the elevator rises. Some credits that I missed. James.
transformed us. Solid Snake puts his hand to his ear. And the codec screen. That is the, the codec activation. The codec is like a, a, a radio, um, a, a two-way radio. Uh, and in this case, we've got uh, text as well for my reading pleasure. And um, th in this screen, there's uh, two profile pictures, one for the, the sender and one for the receiver. Sorry, that's not what I mean. You know, the two people in the conversation. So on the left-hand side, we've got a picture of um, Colonel... Colonel? Uh, and on the right hand side there's a, a picture of solid snake with his um his um uh what are they called dive goggles on um and his uh um his uh funny hat thing the water hat uh in the center there's a a bit of text saying p t t push to talk there's um uh, a volume uh meter and um a readout of the current frequency which is one four zero point eight five um, below that is the word memory, and that comes into play with the, the actual interface later. This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation, Snake? Looks like the elevator in the back is the only way up. Just as I expected. You'll have to take the elevator to the surface, but make sure nobody sees you. If you need to, contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the select button. When we need to contact you, the codec will beep. When you hear that noise, press the select button. The codec's receiver directly stimulates the small bones of your ear. No one but you will be able to hear it. Got it. Okay, I'm ready to go. And the codec fades away. Alright, I'm now in a gameplay section. So I'm at um, the front left of the loading dock um, in, in this cave. Um, I'm on the first bit of landing that's um, out of the water. Um, and to the uh, right of me, I'm going to go down some steps um, back into the water because I happen to see um, in the water there's a, uh, an item that I can pick up. So I just picked up that ration, um, which will let me um, restore some health. Um, and in the top left corner of my screen on the main HUD, I've got um, a life bar, which at the moment is quite small and gets uh, larger as you go through the game. While you're underwater, it also shows um, a bar for the, not the amount of oxygen you've got. Um, in the top right, there's um, oh, pushing select. Snake. Yeah, give me a sec. Um, so on the top right, there's a, a radar, which is a sort of a, a pretty integral part of the game. This is mostly a, a stealth game. Um, at least that's how I play it. Um, uh, and, and the radar allows me to see, um, you know, what enemies are around, um, and what, how much they can see. So that, that allows you to, uh, um, get around without being seen too much. You have to crawl to get through there. First, crouch down by pressing the crawl button, and then use the directional button to crawl in the direction you want. Kind of a, uh, a running joke in this series is they, um... Uh, they they they, just, they break the fourth wall and describe um, actions that the player should take to the main characters. Um, so, in particular, I remember in um, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, right at the start, they're explaining the controls to you by um, running you through a, 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 a military training drill. And they say, in order to take someone down, hold the action button and, and whatever. And it's it's uh, just sort of a funny recurring joke. Because Snake doesn't know what that means. He doesn't have an action button. He's got hands and legs. But I know what that means. Be careful, though. Crawling is slow and you can't attack when you're doing it either. The uh, profile um, picture on the left-hand side changed to a, uh, a, 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 a woman with long hair. Small lips, you know. Uh, you can stand up by pressing the crawl button again. Pressing select to exit. Yeah, so that'll be. Um, I'm I'm playing this game with a uh, a PlayStation Four controller plugged into my PC. Um, so all the buttons are the same. Should be. So I'm pressing the uh, the X button to drop down and crawl. So I'm gonna start crawling. 
There we are. Uh, and I'm under a, uh, a, a sort of a, a tank of water at the moment. And while I'm crawling, it shows me a, um, a point of view of um, what Snake can see. So it zooms me right in. Um, I'm just looking at the radar now. I'm crawling. I'm uh, sneaking around these uh, shipping containers. So there's there's four um, four sets of them arranged in a in a square, and I can go through the center of them. Um, and I'm just going around the right edge at the moment. I'm watching the radar to see where the guards can see. And I'll just avoid these puddles that might be over here there. Uh, and in the back right corner, just pick up a ration there. Um, there's a bit of a there's, a there's a forklift here that I can use as a bit of cover. So I'm just going to sit here and um, wait until something happens because I I happen to know that the elevator is going to come back down soon. There's uh, a lot of credits happening um, during this part. I'm not going to read them all. Um, if you would like to know, um, you can go to the Wikipedia article. They're everywhere. I'm just watching the radar while I'm waiting here to make sure no one sees me. There we go. That's the elevator descending. And it, ga it gave me a uh, bit of a shot of the elevator as it was coming down there. There's um, another another guard on it. So watching the radar, they've just stepped out of the elevator and now I'm going to stand up, move out from behind the forklift to the left, hop onto the elevator. Cutscene again. Snake takes off his goggles and uh, wetsuit, I guess, and flippers. Dropping them on the floor of the elevator. Solid Snake is very much a uh, a '90s action hero. I believe um, there's not much to be seen in this particular version of the game because well, they kind of left a lot of the, the graphics up to the imagination. Um, so what I can see is that he's got a kind of, well, what I'm imagining is that he's got a kind of squared jaw. Um, he's got a, a, ba a blue bandana around his, uh, around his, his head, um, which, which is kind of a, a staple of his design. Um, he's got um, black hair, in a sort of square arrangement. I don't remember the word for that. Um, uh, you know, something. And he's got um, a uh, what's called a sneaking suit. It's a big. Uh, it's it's made of sort of panels of um, of material, the kind of gr dark gray black, um, and they're supposed to sort of blend in with the environment that he's in. I think. <laughs> So as the elevator rises, we get establishing shots of uh, the, um, the loading bay passing out of view. Heading up through the rock. Tactical espionage action. Metal Gear Solid. Fading to black. Here we are. So still on the elevator, we've come up into a, uh, a sort of mountainous area um, with snow all around. So all of all of the ground is covered in white. Um, there's there's snowflakes coming down. Probably be pretty chilly after getting out of the water. Um, and um, directly ahead, out front of the elevator, is um, some sort of facility, very industrial looking. Snake takes a quick look around and then runs off. Crouching down for a second behind a uh, behind a block to take a call. It's Snake. I'm in front of the disposal facility. Excellent, Snake. Age hasn't slowed you down one bit. 
How's that sneaking suit working out? I'm nice and dry, but it's a little hard to move. Bear with it. It's designed to prevent hypothermia. This is Alaska, you know. Take it easy. I'm grateful. If it weren't for your suit and your shot, I would have turned into a popsicle out there. An anti-freezing peptide snake. All of the genome soldiers in this exercise are using it. I see. I'm relieved to hear that. Already tested, huh? By the way, how's the diversionary operation going? Two F-16s just took off from Galena and are headed your way. The terrorist radar should have already picked them up. away from the codec. So Snake looks around this block that he's hiding behind and there's a, uh, a big helipad in the area of the, uh, uh, in the middle of the courtyard area um, in front of the facility um, and on top of it is a, a large, uh, well not that large, sort of a medium sized um, helicopter gunship. Um, there's two guards and the um, the man in the long coat from earlier is, is uh, talking to one. Behind D. Colonel, what's a Russian gunship doing here? I have no idea, but it looks like our little diversion got their attention. Now's your best chance to slip in unnoticed. So the man in the long coat has uh, hopped into the, the helicopter. Directly upwards and then moving away. Directly over Snake's head. There are only 18 hours left until their deadline. You've got to hurry. Wow, you must be crazy to fly behind in this kind of weather. Who's that? Oh, sorry. I haven't introduced you two yet. This is Mei Ling. She was assigned to us as our visual and data processing specialist. She designed your codec, as well as your Soliton radar system. Contact her if you have any questions about either of them. <laughs> nice to meet you, Snake. It uh, Mei Ling is, uh, she's got her hair tied back, um, sort of black hair, probably. Um, she's got a, a pair of military, um, headphones with a, a microphone wrapped around the front. It's an honor to speak to a, a living legend like yourself. What's wrong? Nothing. I just didn't expect a world-class designer of military technology to be so cute. <laughs> Get a You're just flattering me. No, I'm serious. Well, I know I won't be bored for the next 18 hours. Come on. I can't believe I'm being hit on by the famous solid snake. But uh, I'm surprised. You're very frank for a trained killer. Looks like we both have a lot to learn about each other. Yeah, I'm looking forward to learning about the man behind the legend. But first, let me explain about your Soliton radar system. The bright dot in the middle is you, Snake. So the Soliton radar, I explained a little bit before, is a, a green box in the upper right of my screen. Um, if you're on the hard or extreme difficulties, I think, it's disabled or it works in a different way. I think in extreme you don't have any, but in hard it gets turned off immediately if anyone sees you. I forget. Um, so it's there's um, green lines um, representing um, walls and objects and um, you know obstacles, um, and in the middle there's a uh, a white dot um, that represents snake. And red dots are your enemies, and the blue cone shape represents their field of vision. And they move around um, dynamically, so it actually follows where they are. Uh, so the original design of the radar, I think, was 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 required because of how the um, the camera system works in this game. So when you're playing the game, unless you're in um, first person view, which you can't move um, when you're in that mode, um, it, the the camera is always overhead. Um, looking down on Snake at sort of a, a slight angle. So you can see the immediate area that's around you, but it can be hard, you know, if there's a, a tall object in the way that you won't be able to see behind that. Um, obviously Snake can't, but as a video game player, you need to you know, know what's around. Um, so the radar system really, really helps with that. Be careful, Snake. The genome soldiers have highly developed senses of hearing and vision due to their gene therapy. 
Make sure you don't let them see you. First, I want you to infiltrate the disposal site and look for the DARPA chief. The DARPA chief was injected with the same GPS transmitting nanomachines as you. He should appear on your radar as a green dot. Get whatever information you can from him about the terrorists. If he's alive, that is. Snake, your radar isn't affected by the weather, but if you're discovered by an enemy, you won't be able to use it. Yes, it gets jammed easily, I'm afraid. Yes, it's all made from currently existing technology. You won't be able to use it in an area with strong harmonic resonance, so be careful. We'll be monitoring your movements by radar, so contact us by codec anytime you want. Got it. I'll call if I'm feeling lonely. Seriously, Snake, we're here to back you up, so call if you need some information or advice. I'm also in charge of your mission data. Contact me if you want me to record your current status. My frequency is 140.96. I.E. call that frequency to save your game. It's a dedicated frequency for saving data. Don't forget it. Remember, except for your binoculars, you're naked. You need to arm yourself with whatever weapons you can find. I remember. First, I'm strip-searched by Dr. Naomi here, and then all my weapons are taken away. Imagine yourself put in that position. Well, if you make it back in one piece, maybe I'll let you do a strip-search on me. No! I'll hold you to that, Doctor. No! By the way, sorry to disappoint you, but I did manage to smuggle out my smokes. How did you do that? In my stomach. Thanks to the shot you gave me that suppressed my stomach acids. Cigarettes? Disgusting. How are those going to help you? You never know. Yeah, you never know. Alright, Snake is without my control, crossing the uh, the courtyard to the right, and then uh, in first person he's taking a look around. So, uh, to the left-hand side, um, there's um, this is all one big building around the outside of this courtyard area. And along the left-hand side, there's um, the entrances to some storage rooms. Um, right up the back, there's, there's uh, the main area of the building which is quite tall um let's say four stories four or five high um there's a, a catwalk going around it at the um at the third story level um right in the middle um there's a, a, a big loading door um on the right hand side it's panned past it at the moment i'm just Remembering, on the right-hand side, there's a, a bit of guard post um, and some stairs that go up. Um, yeah, in the middle, there's the aforementioned um, he uh, helipad. I think that's the actual word for it. Um, and then just behind that, there's uh, there's two um, uh, trucks with um, with a little bit of cargo in them, and the the backs are open. If you want to get in, there's the front. And on the right-hand side, there's um, there's a, a raised um, bit of land with um, with some some boxes on it for for cover. Front door. It's the fastest way. So that was um, a Snake opening up the inventory menu and um, op uh, pulling out his uh, binoculars, and now he's zooming in a little bit. But there's too much risk of being spotted by the enemy. I can't just knock on the door and ask them to let me in. Uh, there's one sentry on the left, and one on the right. They're armed with five five sixers and pineapples. Those are uh, sort of uh, contemporarily modern-looking uh, assault rifles, I believe, and by pineapples I think he means grenades. What about the air duct near the door? There should also be a duct on the second floor. I can't see it from here. I'll let you decide the best COA. I'm counting on you, Snake. So, I'm going to go over some noises. Um, yeah, make the same noise. So, um, the inventory sounds, when it opens, that, when it closes, that. And that either means I've closed it without selecting anything, or I've closed it and something's been equipped. So, I'll try to um, keep track of that. 
um, but I can also open the inventory on the right side, which makes the same noise, um, and that's for weapons, of which I have none at the moment, so it just cycles through no item. Um, so the left-hand side has um, uh, utility items, so I've got the scope, I've got two rations, uh, and I've got a pack of cigarettes. Um, the cigarettes say, Solid Snake's favourite brand. Smoking is hazardous to your health. Which is very true. The rations say, Restores life. Used by pressing circle while the menu is open. I won't do that right now. Uh, and the scope, which is the binoculars, say, Magnifying scope. Press circle to zoom in, X to zoom out. So, I'm going to go into first person, have a quick look around. So, um, directly out from the courtyard... Um, towards the front. It uh, is a, uh, a cliff face, um, as in it, it drops off to a cliff. Uh, what's COA? Sorry. Uh, I don't remember. It, it defined the term, but I wasn't really paying attention that much. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it drops off to a, to a cliff, and um, there's not really anything to see out there, just... Um, snow falling and uh, very dark grey skies. So I'm going to continue around to the right, I think, watching the radar to make sure there's uh, no one around. So I'm on the right-hand side of the courtyard now, and I can see um, directly inwards there's a, a patrol going around the boxes on the right-hand side. So I'm just going to hide behind one of these boxes, lean up against it. I can see them on the left-hand side. They're sort of taking a few steps um, uh, towards the inside of the courtyard and then stopping and turning in a different direction. Skip along to the next box, take another look. Um, with the angle that, uh, that the camera's at at the moment, I can see that on the helipad there's um, two searchlights going back and forth across it. Oh, course of action, of course. Sorry about that. Yes. Um, uh... Yeah, on, on the helipad, I can see there's two searchlights going back and forth, and there's an item in the middle of there that I could go pick up. But I don't think I'm going to do that right now. Um, I can also see that uh, the, the storage rooms over on the left-hand side of the courtyard, one of them is open, um, and one of them appears to be closed. Ah, I just instinctively went to go move the camera around, but that, that's not in this version of the game. So looking at my radar again, I can see that patrol coming back down towards me. I'm going to wait until they go past... They uh, just started coming around to my side of that uh, the box. That was a sneeze that they just did. And they passed me. Uh, I just ran over that huh? ration, but uh, footprints are these? I'm full on it. They've seen my footprints, so they're now suspicious. I'm watching a camera um, that's over the stairs at the a back surveillance right. Surveillance camera? The, um, the field of view of the camera is on my radar as well. Um, that patrol that saw my footprints is currently following them, and they are about to see me, so I'm probably going to have to uh, beat them up in a sec. Yeah, I'm not very good at video games, you see. I've died. <laughs> Snake, are you okay? Snake? Game over. Snake? Yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm not very good at this. So uh, <laughs> the uh, the patrol that was around those boxes saw my footprints and started following them to where I was. Um, and um, I tried to run out to knock them out, but then the camera that was above the stairs saw me because I was right next to them. Uh, and then I started getting shot at. So let's let's go again. I wonder of video games, really. I can just I can just get going again. It's great. I'm gonna take the same route, but I'm gonna watch it a little bit harder. So I'm near the boxes again on the right-hand side, watching the radar. Uh, right, okay, I can see that patrol again, um, just to my left. That's their footsteps. Huh? Whose footprints are these? Shh, they're no one's footprints. Hmm. Okay, they're looking around, ignoring it. Excellent, excellent. They sneeze and then head back down out of the courtyard. Court. A surveillance camera? 
get out of the field of view of that camera. And I'm going to sort of sneak my way up the stairs. So I'm looking at the radar again. Now that I'm on the second level, I can see everything that's up here. So going around these stairs to the right, um, I'm now on that catwalk on the, um, the second level. Pressing myself against the uh, against a little uh, inset in the wall here. Just a guard on my left. Almost saw me about two feet away around the corner. And they'll turn around and start patrolling the other way. And now I'll start following them. Um, in later games, you can uh, oh I can pause with the with the pause button now. How good. Um, uh, in the later games, you can. Uh, uh, crouch while you're walking, which makes you a little bit quieter. Um, I think you can do that in Metal Gear Solid 3, 4, and 5. I don't think you can do it in Metal Gear Solid 2. I don't remember. It's been a little while since I actually played them. I'm just watching that patrol again. Heading up here. So I'm just uh, walking along the catwalk now. Um, popping into some insets while I can to, to get a grip on the situation. And the second one that I've come to here um, has a, uh, a, a ventilation shaft open at the, at, at the ground level. Uh, I'm just going to answer this call. That base must have some kind of ventilation system to recirculate the air. There should be air ducts around there somewhere. They must need a lot of power to run the base. There's probably a diesel generator somewhere. Give me some and since options. generating electricity requires oxygen, there must be exhaust openings for that, too. You're not going to believe this, but they shot down the F-16s we were using as a diversion with a Hein D. Then we got a message from Liquid. He said if we try something like that again, he'll launch the nuke. Snake, hurry up and get in there. That Hein will be coming back soon. All right. So I'm going to hop in this uh, ventilation shaft before that um, patrolling guard on the left turns around and comes back. So I'm just going to crawl down and hop in. So now I'm in first person view inside the ventilation shaft and as we go through here, yep, here we go into a cutscene. So you'll hear the sound change. So we out, outside in the courtyard there was, you know, all the uh, snow noises, wind, whatever. Um, but I think in here, yeah, it's going to be, um, you know, metallic. So a lot of that is music, but we can hear a little bit of machinery running. And we're just crawling through the, um, ventilation Snake, shaft. this is McDonald Miller. It's been a long time. So this is, uh, this is Miller. Um, he's got white hair tied back um, tightly behind his head, and he's got a dark pair of sunglasses on. Master, what are you doing here? I quit being a drill instructor, so I moved out here for some peace and quiet. I'm in retirement, just like you. Once in a while, I still help train the Alaskan scouts. Passing on the skills to a new generation, huh? <laughs> Campbell told me about the situation here. I thought I might be of some use. There's no one I'd rather have in a foxhole than you. Well, I know lots about survival in a harsh environment. I've lived in Alaska longer than you, so call me if you have any questions about the flora or fauna out here. My frequency is 141.80. All right, we'll continue on through the uh, ventilation shaft. So all, all, all the controls I've got in here are forward and back and turning left and right. So, just continuing to head forward. I've gone around um, one turn to the left, and uh, there's a, uh, a grating over the, uh, the shaft ahead of me. And I can see... Oops. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, what? Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm having a, a peer through the grating at the moment, and I can see um, a big uh, room, sort of um, industrial, military kind of look. Um, all the walls are metal, there's um, a few surveillance cameras around the corner, um, there's another catwalk going um, around the entire room, except for um, an elevator at the back um, with a control panel. Um, there's a couple of storage rooms on the second level that I can see going off. Um, 
there's what looks like a hallway. No, sorry, that's an that's an imp that's an open room um, on the right hand side, and um, I can only really see the top floor at the moment. What's around um, on the catwalk? But on the bottom, there's some there's a pair of trucks. Um, there's a cargo lift, um, and it looks like the stairs down from the catwalk are on the left hand side of the room. So we'll see once we get there. So I'll, I'll continue through the ventilation shaft. So I'm going around to the right. Turn left. And at a bit of an angle now. And there's a, uh, a grating in the floor here. I moved the dark machine to the cell in the first floor basement. What about the vent shaft cleaning? They just opened the vent covers. They're about to start spraying for rats. First floor basement ventilation shaft. Shut those covers as soon as they're done spraying. Also, keep your eye on that woman in the cell. Don't get careless now. Woman in the cell? Did something happen? There's an intruder. Really? He's already done three people. He's killed three people? Yeah. Say he's using stealth, too. Stealth? There's an intruder besides me? Anyway, I want you to increase the security detail on the chief. That was two guards talking uh, while Snake was uh, looking down through that um, that grating. Continuing on. So the shaft goes down a little bit, about two feet. And there's another grating off to my right, so looking through here, this is into one of those storage rooms that was on the right-hand side of the catwalk. I can see a surveillance camera at the back left corner. There's um, wooden boxes piled around the right-hand side of the room. Um, can't see much else other than that. So let's continue on. Another grating on the right hand side, a similar shaped sort of room. Doesn't seem to be a surveillance camera in here. Um, and I can see a pickup item on the floor um, at the back left corner. There's what looks like a desk or maybe just some more metal crates. Alright, let's continue on. So we're going back up a couple of feet and then around the corner to the left. So ahead of me there's um, an open grating um, in, in the ventilation shaft uh, towards the, the bottom. Um, and further beyond that is a pickup item, so I'm going to try and grab that. What's up? Press the action button to drop down. Okay, good to know. I probably would have forgotten. I don't want to do that at the moment. I'm just going to continue over and grab this. It's just a ration anyway. Um, I can only hold two of those at the moment. I think it uh, the amount that you can hold continues as you go on. So I'm going to press the action button over this hole. So we're climbing down a ladder out of that ventilation shaft um, into the, the back side of that large um, room on the catwalk. Use the elevator to change floors. There should be a cargo elevator that you can take down somewhere around there. Try to find it. Yeah, so I saw that through the grating before, so that's just off to my left um, on the ground level. Um, but I can't get over the railing um, on the catwalk here. So there's a surveillance camera off to my right in the back right corner of the room on the catwalk. So I'm just sneaking around it here. They um they they rotate um about 90 degrees. No, this one's going about 45 degrees back and forth. So if you time it right, you can um, get through their their angle of vision. So I'm just pressed against the wall and wait until it goes around. Can I get through this door? No, I can't. Whoops. Okay. I'm kind of struggling with the controls just a little bit. Oh, still am. Come on, there we are. Okay, I'm past. Um, I'm going to go into the storage room that's to the right-hand side. So this is the one that I looked in earlier that has um, 
some wooden crates on the right and a camera at the back left corner. So I'm going to wait until that's pointed the right way. Oh, good lord. And just sneak around into the back corner underneath the camera, wait until it moves. And pick up a SOCOM. So that's a pistol, so I'm going to equip that right now. So in my weapons inventory, I've got now the SOCOM pistol. Semi-automatic pistol, hold down square to aim, release to fire. And I've also got chaff grenade. Disables electronics, press square to push pin, no, to pull pin, release to throw. So I've equipped the SOCOM, I'll wait for that camera to turn back again. There it is. All right, so I'm going to continue around the catwalk. So I'm going around the front of the room now. I really wish I could walk slowly, because um, the uh, enemies in this game, I believe, can hear your footprints if you're walking on materials like this catwalk is made out of. So I've gone around the front of the room, and I'm on the left-hand side now. I'm going to hide in another little alcove in the wall. There's another camera in the back left of the room that I'm coming up to, so I'm just going to wait for it to turn the right way in. So I've got some time. It's facing me. And it's facing the right. I'm going to go around. Can I get into this door? No, I can't. Okay. Hiding against the wall again. <laughs> There's uh, another, wall, another door to uh, enter a storage room on the left-hand side. I'm now underneath the camera. Just going to. Oh, good lord. Ah! Ah! Yeah, I'm pretty bad at this game. So the uh, the camera saw me there because I, I I got lost on the controls. Just gonna run away, back around the catwalk to the right hand side. Oh, the other camera saw me. Let's uh, let's go up the. Um, how do I go up here? I'm just hopping back into the ventilation shaft, and uh, we'll just give it a second. <laughs> See, I've got it on easy mode, but I'm just I'm just not good at this game. I'm gonna. Uh, my life is about a third, so I'm just gonna eat a quick ration. And I may as well pick up this other one that's in the in the shaft again. I'm not sure how much. So I, I think my SOCOM was was full on ammo, and now I have five. So that's not good. So let's do that again, dropping out of the, uh, the shaft there. And we'll wait for the camera in the right hand side of the room. Continue around. Alright, going around the catwalk once more. I made a, uh, a post about the stream on uh, on Mastodon and I did say that I'm not good at video games, so I think I'm safe there. Right, I'm under the camera again at the, uh, the back left of the room. I'm going to try to do this a little bit better this time. Heading down the stairs, down from the catwalk. Alright, here we are. So I'm on the bottom floor now, um, directly head of snakes so on the, the left hand side of the open area on the bottom floor is a, a large tank oh and uh, according to the pause screen this area is called tank hangar so that makes sense um, I can see a patrol around the tank to the right and also near the back of the room so let's see where can I go I'm going around the front of the tank towards the, the front of the room there's another tank on the right here um, that is in the midst of being picked up by a big, uh, a big lift, a big cargo hoist. Um, and I'm going to try to get to that elevator at the back of the room. So I'm going to wait for this patrol that's just coming around. Here we are, here we are. So I'm going to 
go between these two tanks. See where this patrol at the back of the room wants to go. They're going to the left, out of the way of the elevator. Beautiful. I'm going to use the elevator control panel. That opens up. I can hop in and go to D1, I suppose, on the, uh, on the floor selector. <sighs> Alright. So this elevator, it's uh, all metal and industrial. You know, not none of that fancy uh, hotel colours. Alright, so on my radar, before I hop out of the elevator, I can see that there is um, an open room before me to the south. Would it be fair to describe that as south? I think so. Um, and then to the uh, to the east of that, there's a few rooms, and there is a um, flashing red dot, which I think I was told is what I'm going after. Um, the DARPA chief. So let's come out into the main room. I'm oh, getting a call. Look at the radar. It's picking up the DARPA chief. He's the green dot. Oh. Hurry and rescue him. I was wrong. So green dot, you say. I'm going to continue down the hallway until I can see a green dot. So on the right, I'm seeing a lot of, um, there's a big room, there's a s couple of smaller ones. On the left-hand side, there's something that I can't identify. So I'm continuing around to the bottom of the hallway. Snake, if you want to go up or down a ladder, just press the action button by the ladder. Yeah, I learned this already. Uh, so, yeah, there's a, a ladder here up into another ventilation shaft, and I just press triangle instead of circle. I'm really not very good at video games. Alright, we're in another shaft. Um, so, I don't have access to the radar in here, but I'm going to try and keep track of where I am. My audio has just died. Cool. Why? It's just the game audio. That's um, an interesting choice. Let me uh, see what's going on there. Always show volume meters, please. Yep, there is no volume coming out of there. Okay, that's interesting. Give me a second. Okay, fixed it. I just had to reset the emulator's um, audio. That was weird. Okay. Should be back. Yep. OBS can hear me. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I don't have access to the, uh, the radar in here, so I'm going to try and keep track of where I'm going. So I'm going straight upwards, northwards, um, and to the west, um, there's a grating at the bottom that we're going to look through in a second, and beyond that there's another grating and then an item pickup. So let's have a look through this one, if I can. Whoop, yep, whoop, yep, yep, whoop. How do I look through this grate? Oh, there we are. Oh, kind of damn cold. <laughs> so looking directly down through this grating, there's uh, uh, a man sitting on a toilet. Um, it looks really grimy. Um, it's sort of lit in a, in a sort of cold green light because old fluorescence, I guess. Um, and, uh, there's, um, a, an item pickup in front of him, which is probably something disgusting, like some toilet paper. I hate Alaska. Boy, oh boy, that woman is built all right. Alright, so that's uh, giving me a hint that I could go down there and pick something up, and I might do that, I'm not sure. Um, so there's another grating here ahead of me, looking down in there. There's another item pickup. I'm seeing a desk with a computer and some documents and a blue chair. Oh, I do have analog control over this. And a laptop. How good is that? Um, but ahead, I'm just going to pick up some SOCOM bullets. That will be very useful. Heading back the way I came, so I'm now on the far east side of the room. 
the area. And now I'm heading north again. So I should be going towards those small rooms that were near the northeast. Um, right, and ahead of me I've got, um, looking west, I've got two gratings, two grates that look down. Is that a woman? So this is looking down into one of the, uh, the cells. Um, there's a, a, a bed with a, a spread on it and a, um, uh, a, well, a built woman, um, as Johnny said before, um, wearing some boots, a black um, tank top. She's got sort of uh, orangey hair, I think, maybe brown. I'm not so good with that. Uh, and she's doing uh, sit-ups on the bed. No. That was a very dramatic sting. Yes? Snake, the DARPA chief signal is coming from somewhere in that area. Isn't there some place to drop down? Take a look around in first-person view mode. So first-person view mode is how I'm uh, looking down through these grates, holding triangle and looking down. Oh, except that it didn't even let me do that. Cool. In a cutscene now, Snake's looking down through the grate. Uh, there's another cell, same sort of design. There's um, there's a bed with a spread, a, a, a grimy bed with a spread on it. Um, there's a toilet in the corner and a uh, a sink with a tap. And um, there's a, a man in a white shirt um, and uh, what are they called? Uh, pants, trousers, um, with uh, black hair sitting on the edge of the bed. And Snake is disassembling the vent. Who, who's that? And he uh, sort of slides himself through and drops down. I'm here to save you. You're the DARPA chief, Donald Anderson, right? You're here to save me, huh? What's your outfit? I'm the pawn they sent here to save your worthless butt. Really? It's true. You don't look like one of them. Donald Anderson, played by George Bird. In that case, hurry up and get me out of here. Slow down. Don't worry. First, I want some information about the terrorists. The terrorists? Do they really have the ability to launch a nuke? What are you talking about? The terrorists are threatening the White House. They say if they don't accede to their demands, they'll launch a nuclear weapon. Sweet Jesus. Is it possible? It's possible. They could launch a nuke. Um, cutting into the, uh, the adjacent cell with the, the woman in it here. I've just noticed on her left arm she's got a, a tattoo, like on her, um, the, f the front, the top, the top arm, the one that isn't the forearm. What? The aft arm, one might say. They plan to launch. I thought this place was just for keeping the dismantled warheads. She's listening through the wall. They shouldn't have access to a missile. What I'm about to tell you is classified information. Okay. We were conducting exercises with a new type of experimental weapon. A weapon that will change the world. What? A weapon with the ability to launch a nuclear attack from any place on the face of the Earth. A nuclear-equipped walking battle tank. Sorry, I'm fiddling. My recording thus far is only... Gear. It can't be. 800 megs. You knew? Sorry, stuff's happening. Uh, so there's a, 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 a what's the word? Like a, a flash forward vision cutscene. Um, this is a, a big sort of ha hangar area um, underground, and there's um, a large um, bipedal machine. Metal Gear is one of the most covered in scaffolding. Big with black projects. How did you know that? So this Metal Gear, it's um yeah it's it's bipedal so it's uh it it's got um sort of a big cockpit up the top front, um where 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 a, a person may sit and pilot it, and then it's got a a big um God I've not had to describe this before it's got sort of a 
rectangular body going back, and then there's um, joints that come down to where its you know legs are, um, and those I think I can't see right now, but I think they have wheels on the bottom. No, they don't. Um, and it's got um, a big gun, a rail gun, and it's also got a radar thing, like a radar dish. Um, we'll get a better look at it later on. Um, yeah, but it's it's got sort of walkways and scaffolding all around at the moment. We've had a couple of run-ins in the past. So that's the reason you were here at this disposal site? Why else would I come to a godforsaken place like this? I had heard the Metal Gear project was scrapped. On the contrary. It's grown into a huge joint project between Armstech and ourselves. We were going to use this exercise as raw data and then proceed to mass production. If it hadn't been for the revolution. Back in the revolution. Cell. Rex has fallen into the hands of terrorists. Rex. Rex. Metal Gear Rex. The code name for the new Metal Gear prototype. So the door to the uh, the cell is um, all flat metal, um, and then in the, in the center around eye height is a uh, a cutout for you know stuff to be passed in and for um, viewing of the prisoners. Um, so outside the cell at the moment, there's a uh, there's a guard holding an assault rifle, who's just sort of noticed that there's talking going on inside the cell. Already finished arming the warhead they plan to use with Rex. These guys are pros. They're all experienced in walking towards the door, handling and equipping weapons. Hey, shut up in there, will ya? Uh, <laughs> Donald looked through the door and checked that the coast was clear, and Snake has just uh, has has jumped off to uh, beside the door. But I thought that all nuclear warheads were equipped with safety measures. Some kind of detonation code that you have to input. Oh, you mean PAL. Yes, of course, there is a PAL. It's set up so that you need to input two different passwords in order to launch the device. There are two passwords? Yes, Baker knows one, and I know one. Baker? The president of arms tech. That's right. Each of us needs to input our password, or there can be no launch. But... They found out my password. You talked? Psychomantis can read people's minds. You can't resist. Psychomantis? One of the members of Foxhound. He has psychic powers. This is bad. It's just a matter of time before they get Baker's too. The woman's still listening through the wall. If they find out Baker's password... Yes, they'll be able to launch a nuke any time. But there is a way to stop the launch. What? The card keys. Card keys? They were designed by Armstead, the system developers, as an emergency override. Can't... Even without the passwords, you can just insert the card keys and engage the safety lock. And if I do that? Yes. You can stop the launch. That card key. So where are the keys? Baker should have them. Listen, you need three card keys. There are three different slots to put them in. You need to insert a card into each one of them. Okay, three card keys. Do you know where they might be keeping Baker? Somewhere in the second floor basement. Second floor basement. I heard the guards say they moved him to an area that has a lot of electronic jamming. Any other clues? Yes. They cemented over the entrances, but didn't have enough time to paint them. Why don't you look for the areas where the walls are a different color? Here, take this. It's my ID card. Um, you know, a normal sized, you know, ID card type thing. 
Um, it's uh, white with yellow stripes and there's an ID number on it that is obviously unreadable. It'll open any level one security door. It's called a pad car. It works together with your body's own electrical field. Personal area network, huh? huh? It transmits data using the salts in your body as the transmission medium. As you approach the door's security devices, they'll read the data stored in the card. And the doors will open automatically. Gotcha. There was a cutaway there to uh, one of those doors that was locked before. Okay, I'm gonna get you out of here. Wait a minute. What is it? You haven't heard any other way to disarm the pal, have you? From your bosses or anyone? No. Are you sure you haven't heard anything? I just said no. So does the White House plan to give in to the terrorist demands? That's their problem. It has nothing to do with my orders. But what about the Pentagon? The Pentagon? What is it? Um, the, uh, the, the, the DARPA chief sort of had a, uh, grasped his chest. Had a, had a moment, I was going to say, but that's not particularly descriptive. What? Slips off onto the ground. Uh, dead. Naomi, the chief. What happened? I I don't know. It looked like a heart attack, but a heart attack? No. Colonel. Are you hiding something from me? Absolutely not. Snake, you've got to understand. This op is security level red. You need the highest security clearance to get access to the complete file. You want me to believe that you're in charge of this op, but you don't have complete access to the file? I told you. The Secretary of Defense is in operational control. I'm just here as your support. Snake, we don't have time to debate. Get out of there and find President Baker. Alright, gameplay again. Um, so we're in the cell with the, uh, the DARPA chief. That's just audio. Okay. So that that was the sound of the woman in the next cell um uh knocking out the guard and uh s stealing their keys and then using the key to open the cell that Snake was in. And looking out of the out of the cell now, I completely got lost there. There's um uh yeah, like a guard station and some lockers. <laughs> and a naked guard on the floor. <laughs> so the woman from the from the cell has uh, stolen the clothes of that guard and the gun, and is now wearing them. So you killed the chief, you bastard! Liquid? No, you're not. I'm solid. Don't move. Is this the first time you ever pointed a gun at a person? My hands are shaking. Your hands are shaking. That. <sighs> Can you shoot me, rookie? He pulls out Careful. his own gun. I'm no rookie. Liar. That nervous glance. That scared look in your eyes. They're rookie's eyes if I ever saw them. You've never shot a person, am I right? You talk too much. You haven't even taken the safety off, rookie. I told you I'm no rookie. <sighs> You're not one of them, are you? That was a... There's a cut to um, outside of the, the door to the cells. Um, there's some armored guards about to uh, break the door in. Or open the door, I guess. Open that door. 
You've got a card, don't you? Why? So we can get the hell out of here. Looks like we'll be a little delayed. It's been opened already. What are you doing? Don't think. Shoot! Uh, uh, I have to play video games now. What am I doing? I'm just mashing the go button. Alright, I've killed three of them. What are you waiting for? Shoot! Don't talk to me like a rookie! And there's more of them I'm coming down you, the corridor. Shoot. Three more have entered the room. And she shot them down. Three more in the room. And I shot them down as well. Three more. Get them, Snake. They're dropping bullets and rations. Uh, so I've just opened the menu to uh, check my um, life and use a ration. I've seen that there's, a, there's two grenades that have been thrown into the room. Shooting them anyway. This is all just a matter of standing here and shooting them, I think. Alright, and we're good. Action film. Thanks for the help. Checking the corridors Wait. clear. And uh the uh the woman starting up the corridor toward the uh towards the elevator that we came in and and uh the camera's uh, zoomed in on her bum as she's running away. She's really waggling it side to side. Who are you? Uh <laughs> That's video games. So this is uh, some sort of lab slash torch chamber. You've killed him. There's uh, uh okay. There's there's three people standing over a, a table, um, with the I'm sorry, sir. With the the DARPA chief, um, tied down to it. There's um the man in the long coat from before. Um, there's uh, another man with uh with a gas mask on. And there's, um, let's call him the man with a gun, because they do look kind of similar. His mental shielding was very strong. That's the gas mask. I must not dive into his mind. Now we'll never get that detonation code. Boss, I have a good idea. Back to uh, that woman in the snake. She's uh, in the elevator now, shooting towards Snake as he's coming up the corridor. And she did a little fist pump as the uh, as the door closed. And um, the uh, the man in the gas mask just teleported um, into the room in front of the elevator, and is sort of floating there. This game's funny. Naomi, I just had some kind of hallucination. Is it from the nanomachines? No, Snake. The nanomachines are functioning properly. So what was it? It must have been psychometric interference coming from Psychomantis, Foxhound Psychic. Think of it as a mental feedback loop. So that was Mantis. All right. I'm going to save the game and end the stream. So I will open the, not that, I didn't mean to do that. Snake. Yeah, I know, shush, okay, shush, bye. Yep, bye, uh-huh, cool, awesome. So I've got the codec open, I'm gonna select Mei Ling. What's up, Snake? I would like to save, please, on memory card one in a new file. Snake, remember what the girl said. The graveyards are full of indispensable men. 
Nick, you're all so alone true. and surrounded by bad guys. Try to be careful and avoid getting into a fight whenever you can. You're right. Wow, you know all sorts of great quotes, don't you? <laughs> well, both my parents are from Guangdong, China, but I was born and raised in America. I've always liked reading literature from both sides. Kind of keeps me in touch. I'll share some more quotes with you if you like. I'm looking forward to it. But to tell you the truth, I'd like to learn more about you. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. Yeah, Mei Ling uh, always gives fun little quotes and stuff like that um, when you save. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it, and then I'll come back in fucking I don't know in a few days or something, and uh, and I'll play more of the game because I d I do want to finish this again. It is it's um I'm gonna pause it there. It it's a good game, one of my one of my favorites. So that was like mostly the intro portion. How long did that take me? Like an hour and a half, a bit less. Um, so there's probably like eight hours left, maybe. I guess I'm doing I'm doing a lot of pausing and um, explaining, so maybe more like fifteen hours total. I don't know what the what the uh, what the deal is. Um, yeah, I'll 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 put it I'll put a thing out, and then uh, and then I'll do that. So I'm, I, how how do I need to stop this? Do I click the end stream button or do I have to click stop streaming? I think I click the end stream button. So, um, ta-ra. Uh, yes. <laughs>